Hello, welcome to Genstone Tarot, Wednesday 21st of July 2021. And we have some astrological news. Venus near bright star Regulus in Leo with Mars close by at sunset. Thank you. That was your astrological news. I didn't understand virtually any part of that. Leave me a comment if you understand any of it, please. I want to know, what did I just say? Okay, we'll have a couple of facts from 1,144 random and interesting facts that you need to know. Ooh. We know, we've done that one before. The singing tree is a wind-powered sound sculpture located in Burnley, in Burnley, England, and was designed by architects Mike Tonkin and Alan, Anna Liu. <coughs> Each time you sit under it, one moment. Each time you sit under it, you'll hear a melody played, depending on the wind for that day. Didn't we have another one? Didn't we have another wind seed? <laughs> Wasn't it in America? I'm pretty sure, or Canada or something. Let me know. I'm sure we did. Mind you, you can't have too many, can you? You can't have too many wind seats. In 2011, archaeologists discovered the skeletal remains of a Roman couple who had been holding hands for over 1,500 years. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Wow. The Shangri-La Hotel in China captured a record for the largest ball pit ever created, measuring 82 by 41 feet. And it contained over a million balls. Oh my gosh. Starbuck is a famous Canadian bull whose genome is so desirable that his sperm has sold for over $25 million in his lifetime and he's sired over 200,000 daughters. Gosh. Well, there you go. Okay, we're using the crow tarot today. Stay. Good doggy. Crow tarot. What do we need to know? Peak of the week. Wednesday is the peak of the week. Oh, okay. The shuffle is done. Well, the big girl shuffle is done. Now there's the other shuffle. Crumbs. Spiritual big jobs, I'm declaring it. Gosh, that's a really good card. God, that's a big reading. Might be for longer than just a daily. Okay, we'll start at the top. I was gonna do an actress said to the bishop, but no, we won't do that. Magician, isn't that a gorgeous card? I love this crow tarot, it's absolutely lovely. I saw it on Gregory Scott a while ago and I had to have it. Okay, we've got the magician. Initially it came out in reverse, but I'm not really, I don't, I'm feeling a bit weird up and down, reverse and upright and all, it doesn't really make any difference is what I'm trying to say. Magician next to the Wheel of Fortune, isn't that a gorgeous card as well? Next to the World. First three cards I pulled, the Magician, the Wheel of Fortune and the World. There's something going on as we're at this kind of tipping point of the year in July. It almost feels like an axis. And things are kind of gathering one way or the other. We've got this wheel of fortune energy. We've got this world energy, a new cycle, an old cycle. We've got the magician energy, which for me always puts us at a crossroads. It also points to our own sense of agency, but we must also, hands up, 
We must also slightly acknowledge it came out in reverse and that that does mean sometimes to have an eye out for a bit of duplicitousness, trickery, any of that kind of stuff. It's not huge, but it's just in the mix. In the middle of the reading, and I've felt this energy for a while, and I suppose we are leaving Cancer season, we're on the cusp of Leo. When do we go to Leo? Is it 22nd? Yes. Yeah, I can, f it feels that. It, it feels that. Am I talking about myself in the third person and referring to myself as it? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it feels that it does and throwing in a bit of Yoda. I've been feeling the Cancerian energy because we've been in cancer season. Okay, and now we're moving out and into Leo season. Okay, there feels like there is that dualistic energy. You know, you get that with the chariot, um, the two horses, the two sphinxes, the double whatever it is, trying to go in one direction, carrying all the controversies and the contradictions and all that stuff with you within. And that is the human condition. We're complicated beasts, aren't we? And this situation is itchy nose, that we're trying to find some agency to break out of a cycle and to begin a new one. The emperor. Mm, I like this. It's kind of masculine energy. It's also the energy of taking a direction, taking the lead, saying it's leadership. It's the father of the tarot, it's the emperor, it's the edicts that he issues. We all have that power within us and it's about finding it. But we do have two fives. And they're two quite kind of disruptive-ish. Well, all fives are a bit disruptive. Five of pentacles, but I like the five of pentacles. This is about, and this has come up day after day as well, hasn't it? This is about not taking the easy road, not taking the easy option, the golden handcuffs. For a lot of you, this is about your work situation, your life security situation, how you earn your money, how you save your money, how you spend your money, how you energetically have your foothold in the world is being looked at maybe by you, you know? Five of Pentacles, has this energy of knowing you can go into that church, knowing you can take refuge here in this fine tree, but the two birds, which represent the two people in the Rider weight version under the church window, they're not going in the tree, they're staying out in the bad weather and they're taking their chances. You, magician Wheel of Fortune world, are getting ready to take your chances, okay? I like it. And five of wands know that people and bureaucrats and red tape and parking tickets and all of that stuff, that everyday naff, little bits of things getting in the way, will continue to do so. And you kind of have to bat on nevertheless, you know, despite this. For those of you, like, let's just say you were looking to break out of a particular career into another one or out of a job or whatever. You'll just find that there's a notice period that's really long or that you hadn't thought about X, Y, and Z to do with HR, or it would be good if you stayed for an extra whatever because then you would get this. It's that, just that kind of stuff. It's not big life-changing stuff with the five of wands, but it's enough to throw a spanner into the works. Okay, down at the bottom, we've got the four of cups in the reverse. This is emotional, not outbursts, it's an emotional output, it's an emotional, how can I put this? I sometimes call it the emotional percolator, like drip, drip, drip of a coffee maker, or it can just be a whole dam bursting. <coughs> there is a need, <coughs> God, I've got such bad allergies at the moment. There is a need to um, break a mold of some kind emotionally. It's that whole can't make the omelette without breaking an egg thing, you know? It's all in there. Oh, excuse me. There's a card on the floor. <laughs> I'm just so not surprised to see this card at this point. Wisdom of the Oracle, Colette Baron-Reed, Chaos and Conflict. 
you know that it's kind of taking the, the stripes off the zebra causing it it's a bit of mayhem it's shaking things up and it's no bad thing and the luck is with you i might as well say the force is with you considering i've been lapsing into yoda recently the force is strong in this one Healing with the Angels, Oracle card, we get playfulness. It's a reminder to play with the energies because they're quite big energies and they could get a bit kind of oppressive, okay? So deal with that in, and I'm calling this a Sagittarian way. Were we in Moon and Sag? Yeah. Moon and Sag turning into Capricorn. Yes. Playfulness and duty. This is a nice playful Sagittarian energy that you can use to stop this getting too heavy, okay? It's very important, but it doesn't have to be heavy. Do leave me a comment and let me know how this one resonates with you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.